Number 8. Chuk Lagoon Vehicle Graveyard During World War II, the Japanese established their main naval base on a small island called Chuk Atoll in the Central Pacific, or more popularly known as Chuk Lagoon. It's one of the more than 600 islands that make up the Federated States of Micronesia. In February of 1944, American forces launched a major air and sea attack on the base. The U.S. sent more than 60 Japanese warships and 250 aircraft to the ocean floor, along with their cargo, which included tanks, trucks, bulldozers, motorcycles, train cars, and other vehicles. Although several key Japanese naval vessels managed to survive the attack, known as Operation Hailstone, it ended with a sweeping American victory. The aftermath of the battle is still visible in the form of a massive underwater vehicle graveyard. Among the wrecks is an eerie array of skeletal remains, military equipment, and everyday items, including medicine bottles, sake bottles, plates, guns, ammunition, tools, gas masks, and even an old newspaper that has managed to somehow stay intact despite spending nearly 80 years underwater. The site also contains the personal belongings of the soldiers who were stationed at the base, including photographs and shoes. Many of the vehicles sit in less than 50 feet of crystal clear water, making the lagoon a popular diving site. As fascinating as they are, however, at least some of the wrecks pose serious environmental hazards. It's unknown how much fuel they took down with them, but oil is known to occasionally wash up on local islands. Experts warn that the sunken vehicles could cause major damage to the environment unless urgent efforts are made to clean them up. Because the site is classified as a Japanese war grave, Japan's government is expected to play a role in the cleanup. Number 7. The USS Mississinua Built in Maryland in 1943, the USS Mississinua was a replenishment tanker that delivered fuel and other materials to other naval ships that were out at sea. She entered service in May of 1944 and spent much of her short-lived career in the South Pacific. In November of that year, the Mississinua became the first ship to be hit by a Japanese manned torpedo known as a Kai-10 while docked at Ulithi Atoll in the Caroline Islands. Moments later, aviation gas fumes in one of the ship's cargo tanks lit on fire, causing a second explosion. Flames tore through the vessel, reaching over 100 feet in height. The fire was so massive, the Japanese mistakenly thought they had taken out three aircraft carriers. Efforts to put out the blaze were futile, and the ship slipped beneath the surface just 15 minutes after being struck. 56 years later, in 2001, adventure divers rediscovered the wreck at a depth of 132 feet. That same year, it leaked tens of thousands of gallons of oil into the surrounding waters, threatening coral reefs, sea turtle breeding grounds, and fish populations. In 2003, the U.S. Navy drilled into the ship's cracked fuel tanks and extracted around 2 million gallons of oil, greatly reducing the hazards it poses to the environment. Number 6. Mass Nazi Graves in 2020, archaeologists in southwestern Poland unearthed a mass burial containing the remains of 18 German paratroopers along with weapons, tools, and medals. Discovered near rural buildings near the village of Kozlis, the soldiers were most likely stationed at a nearby Luftwaffe base to the north of the village. Established during the 1930s, it was one of the Nazi secret training locations known as Eisatzhafen. Three of the men were identified through their dog tags. Researchers believe they died during an attack by the Red Army's first Ukrainian front in 1945. As the Russians approached, the Wehrmacht blew up the base and abandoned it, leaving behind a small contingent of soldiers to fight. The individuals found in the mass burial were most likely among those who stayed and faced Stalin's forces. They were laid side by side in the grave. In addition to the human remains, the team found a pocket watch, an anti-aircraft site for an MG rifle, and a medal known as the Spanish Cross. Hitler issued the award to German soldiers and sailors who fought in support of dictator Francisco Franco during the Spanish Civil War. Like other Nazi medals, it was banned from being worn after World War II ended in 1945. The archaeologists who unearthed the grave said that they plan to analyze the remains and rebury them in a military cemetery. They believe that there are more unidentified burials in the area, which they hope to find with the help from local residents. In 2022, a mass grave containing the remains of 60 German soldiers was found in the town of Babaro. The skeletons bore evidence of broken bones and wore 
helmets with bullet holes in them. They were buried with what archaeologists describe as their meager belongings, including badges, coins, a whistle, and a lucky horseshoe. The team also found parts of their uniforms and shoes. Like the paratroopers found in Colslis, the man most likely died at the hands of the advancing Red Army in 1945. Do you have any family heirlooms that you have passed down through the generations? Tell us in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 5. A B-26 Bomber Wreck The American-made Martin B-26 Marauder first saw combat in the Pacific Theater in early 1942. It saw extensive use throughout the war despite its early reputation as a widowmaker for its high rate of accidents during takeoff and landing. Many of these crashes occurred because the aircraft had an unusually high runway approach speed of 150 miles per hour and pilots who were used to much slower speeds were often hesitant to go that fast, causing the plane to stall. But there were other issues with the Marauder which led to frequent mechanical failure. After identifying the problems with the Marauder's early models, the design was continuously improved. By the end of the war, the aircraft had the lowest loss rate of any U.S. Army Air Force's bomber. One of the many Marauders to go down during the war took off from New Providence in the Bahamas on October 17, 1944. During what was supposed to be a routine training exercise, the plane crashed into the water 400 yards off the island's north coast, killing Royal Canadian Air Force pilots Maurice O'Neill and Jack Wood. In 2021, maritime lawyer and historian Eric Weiberg set out to find the wrecked plane. He succeeded after spending five to six hours a day diving for three straight weeks. Weiberg recovered parts from the plane's fuselage and engine props, a cockpit seat and ejection hatch, landing gear, machine gun, ammunition, and more, which were donated to the Bahamian government agency responsible for preserving historical heritage. Speaking with CBC News, Weiberg said that the most rewarding aspect of the discovery was being being able to tell the pilot's surviving relatives what happened to the men after decades of uncertainty. Number 4. Vistula River Artifacts the Vistula River is Poland's longest and largest river, but it shrank considerably in 2015 when a drought caused water levels to plunge to record lows. Areas that are normally six and a half feet deep dropped to just 20 inches. An array of historical artifacts surfaced, including a World War II era Soviet bomber and Jewish headstones. The Soviet fighter aircraft found near the village of Kamion contained the remains of the crew who went down with it. Archaeologists found fragments of their winter uniforms and boots as well as a parachute, a sheepskin coat collar, a pistol, radio equipment, and ammunition. But the plane itself was so damaged that the team was unable to immediately identify the model. They told BBC News that they believe the bomber crashed in early 1945 as the Red Army began encroaching on the area and the Germans started to withdraw. The Jewish headstones, some of which contain Hebrew inscriptions, were found in the country's capital, Warsaw. They're most likely from the Brodno Cemetery, which once held 300,000 tombstones but was heavily looted by the Nazis and the Soviets. Only 1% of the graves remain at the cemetery today. The drought also revealed the remains of an early 20th century bridge that the Germans blew up, known as the Poniatowski Bridge. It was rebuilt after the war, but the river's dwindling water levels revealed parts from the original. As Europe continues to be plagued by droughts year after year, experts expect historic artifacts to continue turning up. At number 3, a lost bracelet. While searching for artifacts in a World War II battlefield in Lorraine, France back in 2012, metal detectorist Kevin Granat found a bracelet buried 10 inches into the ground. It featured a name, M.G. Phillips, and a serial number. Granat's initial efforts to identify any surviving relatives failed. He eventually gave up and put the bracelet in a drawer, where it sat forgotten for nearly eight years. In 2020, someone suggested seeking the help of a genealogist from Michigan named Megan Hale, who offered offers services through her website, Hunting Down History. Working with just two photographs of the bracelet that she received from Granat, she spent the next several days scouring through records. She identified the owner as U.S. Army Sergeant Marshall Glenn Phillips from Pilot Mountain, North Carolina. Phillips survived the war and lived until 1986. Hale told news station WZZM that when she called the veteran's 80-year-old son, Linville Phillips, to tell him about the bracelet, he initially thought the call was a scam, but she convinced him to let her explain, and by the end of the call, he believed her. Linville recalled his dad telling him about a bracelet he lost during the war, but he said that he never gave it much thought until Hale contacted him. Granat shipped it to Hale, and after spending six months held up in customs due to the COVID-19 pandemic, 
It finally reached its destination. She drove down to North Carolina to hand it over to Linville face-to-face -face and later described it as the most rewarding moment of her career. Number 2. An Aristocrat's Buried Stash while vacationing with his family in northeastern Poland in 2017, a teenager dug up two old milk cans filled with World War II artifacts. Most of the items were personal effects, including a toothbrush, glasses, money, jewelry, a pocket watch, a diary, and a Wehrmacht officer's uniform. There were also letters, various documents, photos, and a silver spoon. Experts identified the owner of the artifacts as Prussian aristocrat Count Hans Joachim von Finkenstein, whose family lived in the area during Germany's occupation of Poland. His last will was among the papers found inside the milk cans. Some of the documents dated back to the First World War, including von Fickenstein's diary. It's unclear whether he owned the Nazi uniform. Most of the collection was handed over to the Count's 81-year-old daughter, Waldraut von Fickenstein, who lives in Germany. The Polish government held on to certain items, including the diary, with plans to translate it. Some of the artifacts, including banknotes and coins, will be displayed at a local museum. As the Red Army advanced on the region in 1944, von Fickenstein sent his daughters away to the West Pomerania region, which straddles modern-day Poland and Germany. He was arrested the following year and died in a camp, and his wife Hildegarda stayed at the home and worked for the Russians for several months until she reunited with her children. Researcher Michael Mlotek told the local press that Hildegarda most likely buried the milk cans. He described how one of the notes they contained was a handwritten message by a Soviet officer instructing fellow service members not to harm the household and that Hildegarda had welcomed them. There was also a paper detailing how the household's livestock became Red Army property. And at number one, Warsaw Ghetto Artifacts The Nazis started establishing Jewish ghettos shortly after they invaded Poland in 1939. In October of 1940, Ludwig Fischer, the governor of occupied Warsaw, gave the go-ahead for the creation of a ghetto in the city. All of Warsaw's Jewish residents were crammed into a walled 1.3 square mile zone, which became the largest ghetto in Nazi-occupied Europe. Its population peaked at 460,000 residents in 1941. Conditions were dismal with an average of 8 to 10 people living in every room. Most of the ghetto's inhabitants were poor, unemployed, and arrived with just a handful of personal belongings. Crowding, coupled with a lack of food and medical care, led to starvation, disease, and other life-threatening circumstances. For those who survived life in the ghetto, the next stop was typically a concentration or death camp. In 2022, archaeologists unearthed a plethora of artifacts, including shoes, tableware, ceramic tiles, diary pages, burned books, and book pages in Polish and Hebrew. The team has been digging near a memorial mound dedicated to Mordecai Anilowicz, who led a resistance movement called the Jewish Combat Organization. It's believed that he died in 1943 during an uprising following the deportation of many of the ghetto's residents to death camps. Archaeologist and historian Jacek Konik told local station TVN24 that the Jewish combat organization members who participated in the demonstration probably took their own lives as they were surrounded by the Germans. One of the first artifacts the team found was a child's brown leather slipper. Sadly, nothing is known of the shoe's owner other than the fact that they probably never got a chance to grow up, according to Koenig. Some of the written materials that were discovered contained first-hand accounts of the event that went on within the ghetto's confines. The team also found what appeared to be the remains of a secret shelter located beneath several townhouses. Excavations are ongoing. Thanks for watching. Which one of these incredible artifacts shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.